Hello, everyone. Today is Tuesday, September the 19th. I'm Ryan Hill. I'm John Galantis. And you're listening to Clearview Today with Dr. Abadan Shah, the daily show that engages mind and heart for the gospel of Jesus Christ. You can visit us online at clearviewtodayshow.com, or if you have any questions for Dr. Shaw or suggestions for new topics, send us a text to 252-582-5028, or you can email us at contact at clearviewtodayshow.com. That's right, and you can help us uh, keep the conversation going by supporting the show. You can share it online, leave us a good review on iTunes or Spotify, absolutely nothing less than five stars. I will shriek, and I will scream, and I will cry, and I will threaten to come to your house and pop you if you don't leave us five stars exactly on iTunes, and guess what? I'm even going to make it easy for you. I'm going to leave a link in the description so we can do just that. You're today's, welcome. Today's verse of the day is coming to us from Nehemiah chapter 9, and verse 5. Stand up and bless the Lord your God forever and ever. Blessed be your glorious name, which is exalted above all blessing and praise. In the wording here, interesting. Notice mm-hmm. that Nehemiah is not saying if you feel like it or if you have time. Get or the if you're heck having, up. If you're having a good day, <laughs> no, you just stand up and Get bless up. the Lord forever. Mm-hmm. Bless the Lord. And, and that posture of just worshiping God, no matter what our life is looking like, no matter what our circumstances are, and that's the heart of what we ought to be doing as Christians. If That's the heart of our show. Oh yeah. If you're if you're a worship pastor or a worship leader or you just have if you've led worship before, you know that there's a lot of times you have to convince Christians it's worth their time to stand up and sing. Yeah. Like you have to convince them like, hey guys, the, re- the reason we're doing what we're doing is blah, 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 blah. And it's, it comes to a point where it's like, this should be self-evident to yeah, you. Yeah, like, well, you know, singing's not really my thing. It's yeah. not really worship. It, worship really is my thing. Okay, but it's God's. Yeah, and I can tell you what, I, I said this the other the other week. It's like, you may be in a place where like singing is not your thing, but if you're going to heaven, you better get used to it real soon. Because mm-hmm. that's all you're going to be doing for all of eternity is praising the Lord. That's and I love that. point. Blessed be your name, which is exalted above all blessing and praise. It means no matter how much I bless you, no matter how much I praise you, I'm yep. still not going to encapsulate all of your glory and all of your goodness. That's That's how good God is. That's right. Speaking of things that are good, I want to talk about something that's bad. Uh You know why? Because it's time for the grapevine. The grapevine. (laughs) (laughs) I couldn't get Ellie to do it. Well, I did get her to do it, but it took some cajole, and she didn't want to make the sound. Oh, you got to make the sound. She definitely didn't want to do the the eat in the ground. Um, I don't like it. I really don't like it. When I go to McDonald's, other fast food restaurants too, but it's really bad at McDonald's. And it's like, they got somewhere else they need to be. They're like rushing me. Oh my, I'm they, so glad that you said that. They, they, it's like they, all right, all right. I'm, I'm going to be, I'm going to be a McDonald's employee uh-huh. and I just want you to order. Sure. All right. So hey. I'm, all right. So this is role play time. Yeah. Okay. This is like, whose line is it anyway? Hey, um, can I get a number two combo with, uh, with fries? Number two combo a, with fries. Anything else? Y- uh, yes. I also like a number four. Number four. Uh, is that it? No, number four with um. Can I get that with uh, a baked potato? Number two and, combo with fries and a number four with a baked potato. Is that it? No, I still have I still have several more orders to go. Um, can I get a, continue a kids, when you're ready? Can I get a kids meal with uh, chicken nuggets? Kids and, meal, chicken nuggets. Is that it? No, it's not. Can I get another kids meal? Go ahead with and continue double- with your order, sir. I'm like, dude, where do you got to be? You at work, bro. You are at work. You are here to you're, serve. Yeah, you here from nine to five. And then from five o'clock to nine o'clock or 10 o'clock, someone else is going to be where you're at. You are at work. You're here to take my order. I'll let you know when that's it. <laughs> this is especially uh, aggravating if you have a family of a large oh size. Oh, my goodness. Can I tell you how many times I've been through the drive through <laughs> and I had to preface my order with saying, hey, I have seven orders <laughs> That I'm going to have you to You gotta put let in. them know ahead of time. I, I will. I will tell you when I'm done. But I have seven orders in order that I have to put in. So just buckle up, get ready, flex your fingers if you have to. Because here we go. It's got to be. It's got to be part of their training. Yeah. Because every not not just some every McDonald's I go every to across the nation. Every single one. There. It's like someone is telling them in McDonald's corporate policy. After they tell you what any item, ask them if that's it. Ask them that if they're if they're done, if yeah. that's all. Yeah. It's like, bro, I'm trying to spend more money. Here's here's a better way to do that. Like, can I get anything else for you today? Yeah. That's a better way to do that because number one, it's kind. Number yeah. two, you might actually upsell me on something. Like I I may have been on the fence about a milkshake, but if you're like, Can I get anything else for you? Well Yeah, I, I, you know what? I've been I, good. I'll get a vanilla milkshake. But if you rush me, hundred percent that's not gonna happen. All they do is they, it's like they rush me every single item. They have to check with me if that's it. And I promise Ooh, it's you, irritating. it's irritating. Like, yeah, and you feel like you gotta tell them, like, hey, I, I'm. This is a big order. Yeah, yeah. It's a big order. So just sit there. And this is crazy. 
but just take the order. Yeah. <laughs> you don't got to facilitate Golly. the order and process. And it's even worse when there's people behind you or they're rushing yes. you. And I'm oh like, do you goodness. do you not see the number of people in my family? Do you, you want me to talk faster? How do you want me to do this? Like, I'll give it to Chick-fil-A. Their yep. customer service is own. Yes, point. it is. It is. I, I gotta. I gotta give. I, I don't love chicken. Chicken is not one of my favorite, uh, like southern foods. But I'm gonna give it to them. I go there sometimes and order something I don't even want. Yep. Just because of the customer service. Customer I'm like, you service know what? Is out of this world. I don't even want a frosted lemonade. I just want to be spoken to with respect. That's right. <laughs> and and, it, and it's Chick-fil-A. their pleasure. It is their pleasure. You know, we saw a McDonald's. It's <laughs> not a Chick Fil A. We saw a McDonald's in Greece. Really? We drove past it. Yeah. It was like it was like almost like three stories. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but they weren't as, they didn't seem as prevalent. You know what was prevalent over there? What's that? KFC. Really? Lots of KFC. Somebody somebody that's that's interesting. I would yeah. not have suspected that. Somebody sent pictures of Domino's. Yeah, there was over. a Domino's. Oh, was that you? Too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. That was in Athens, so a little bit bigger city vibe. Uh, but there was KFC almost everywhere we went. That's crazy. I'm like, KFC, really? What was the food like in Greece? Was it good? So good. What, oh, it was what was delicious. it? Was it mostly vegetable, a lot of meat, a lot of starch? What, um, what do you it think? was it was kind of a balance. There was okay. there was vegetable. There was I mean Greek salad was kind of at every meal. Yeah. Um, um, which is just tomato and cucumbers and onions and feta cheese and the, the mm. olive oil. Um, that was pretty much a staple. There were a lot of meat. Um, they had not as much lamb as I was expecting. Yeah, lamb is pretty big in Israel. Yeah, uh, but chicken, pork, um, beef in places, mm-hmm. and uh, I was so good. Cool. So delicious. Awesome. Well, and they didn't rush you from the table. No, they didn't. If you're like, uh, can I get a lamb kebab? Lamb kebab, is that it? Honestly, if anything, they could have they could have gone a little bit quicker. Really? Because I I, I guess in Greece, dining is sort of a, an experience. So we sat down to eat somewhere, and we're kind of like, you know how we pace things here in America. Like mm-hmm. by the time you're wrapping up your appetizer, your main course yeah, should be hitting should the be table. Out. This is not. It is not that way in Greece. Oh really? Like you finish the appetizer, appetizer plates are cleared from the table, and then you're going to wait for ten to fifteen minutes before the main course comes out. Oh wow! And that's just how it's designed. Like, do you order, you, or do they just bring you the food? No, you order. Okay. Uh, well, in some places, in some places, they, we just had a set mm-hmm. thing what we were getting, but um, you sit there, and it's just meant to be this experience where you're talking and laughing and bonding for several hours, and we're like. Yeah, we got to we go. Gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> I got to find Paul. Yeah, uh, but it was, oh man, it was so good. Cool. We're going to bring Dr. Shaw in just a second, continue talking about Greece uh, and tell you about our trip. But if you guys have any questions or suggestions for new topics, if you want to gripe about McDonald's service employees, <laughs> let us know because we're there too. Um, send us a text to 252-582-5028. Also, no offense if you are a McDonald's employee. Yeah, just, just don't do that. Just don't rush us. Yeah, just don't do that. That's, that's all we're asking. You'll be fine. Visit us online at clearviewtodayshow.com. We'll be back after this. Good morning, afternoon, evening, Clearview Today listeners. My name is John. And I'm David. And we just want to take a quick second and let you know about another way that you can keep in touch with Dr. Shah's work. And that is his weekly podcast series, Sermons by Abadan Shah, PhD. As a lot of you may know, or maybe some of you don't know. If you don't know, you do now. And if you don't know, then maybe just hop off the podcast. David, I'm just playing. hop off the podcast. I'm just playing. Keep listening. <laughs> Dr. Shaw is actually the lead pastor of Clearview Church in North Carolina. Every single weekend, he preaches expository messages that challenge and inspire us to live God-honoring lives. One of the four core values of Clearview Church is that we're a Bible-believing church. So every sermon is coming directly from Scripture, which is great because that guarantees that there are timeless truths that are constantly applicable to our lives. This is a great resource because whether you're driving, whether you're cleaning the house, whether you're working out, you can always benefit from hearing the Word of God spoken into your life. And God's Word is always going to do something new for you every time you hear it. Sometimes it's conviction, and sometimes it's encouragement. But know that every time you listen to God's Word, you're inviting the Holy Spirit to move and work in your life. You guys can check out the Sermons by Abaddon Shah PhD podcast. First and foremost, check it out on our church app. Uh, That's the Clearview app. You can get that in the Google Play Store. You can get that on iTunes. But you can also find the podcast on the Apple Podcast app or on our website at clearviewbc.org. And listen, if you've got a little extra time on your hands, you just want to do some further reading, you can also read the transcripts of those sermons. Those are available on Dr. Shah's website, abaddonshah.com. And we're going to leave you guys a little link in the description so you can follow it. But for right now, David... Let's hop back in. All right. Welcome back to Clearview Today with Dr. Abadan Shah, the daily show that engages mind and heart for the gospel of Jesus Christ. You can visit us online at clearviewtodayshow.com, or if you have any questions or suggestions for new topics, send us a text to 
582-5028. That's right. And if today's your first time ever joining us here on the Clearview Today Show, we want to welcome you, let you know exactly who's talking to you today. Dr. Abadan Shah is a PhD in New Testament textual criticism, professor at Carolina University, author, full-time pastor, and the host of today's show. You can find all of his work on his website. That's abadanshah.com. Dr. Shah, Cali Spera. Cali Spera. Cali Spera. <laughs> Which means... Ah, uh, <laughs> good. Uh, summon your, summon your Greek, uh, your, your ancestry. Right, let me let me get, let me pull it out to the surface. Uh, I'm gonna good, guess it's good day. It's good day, right? Good day. Good okay. day. Yeah. Good day. Uh, Kali Spera is good afternoon. Good, good afternoon. afternoon. Yeah. yeah Kali Kali Mera is what you say in the morning. Good morning. Okay. And then Kali Spera is what you say in the afternoon. And Kali Nifta is, is like good night. It is Which means right like now. there's not like a good night, like yeah. good evening. It's not a good evening. It's yes. a Good night. Yeah. We're leaving. Oh, we're, we're, we're going now. <laughs> we're we we're are, going to bed now. It's like I'm, I'm about to no dip. more talking after this. Yes. Kali, I've said Nikta. Kali Nikta. I'm That's out. it. Kali Nikta means conversation. As that my is dad the punch. That is the pin in the conversation. The, the party is over. Party is over. Party, party, party is, is well, well and truly over. Well, guys, we are sharing today about uh, our recent trip to Greece. Dr. Shaw and I and, and a team of David Nicholas, uh, a team of other people went uh, to Greece, and it was just. Man, it was the time of our lives. It was it was unbelievable just to learn and to walk Paul's steps, mm-hmm. um, to to walk that trip that that you had coordinated with our tour guide over there was just was amazing, uh, amazing. It, it was it was the trip of a lifetime. It was six years in the making. Mm-hmm. Not that you take it takes six years, <laughs> yeah, right? But it's just that things got canceled and then the pandemic. Those three four years yeah. gone, we felt like this was the time yeah. to finally make it happen. And we had a team of uh, thirteen people who went. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Uh, and it was just phenomenal. We uh, last uh, show we talked about our time in Thessalonica, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. our time in Philippi, our time in Verea. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm sorry, in uh, in uh, Kavala, mm-hmm, which yeah. is Neapolis. Mm-hmm. Uh, this was the place where Paul came after he got the Macedonian call. Right. He came across uh, from Troas, which is in modern day Turkey, Asia Minor, and he came across to Greece. And yeah. it kind of felt like a sequel to your previous trip because in yes. your previous trip you were all in Turkey, yeah. like modern day Turkey, what would have been Ephesus, what would have been like Asia Minor, where he was trying right. to get to, and then the Macedonian call happens, and he just is like, all right, I'll just scoot <laughs> on over to Greece, and you're like, I'm going too. And here we are. <laughs> Me too. Yeah, so. we're going with you. <laughs> so may I finish up in Asia yeah, Minor, yeah. and then in September, I'm in in the Thessalonica, Philippi, so it's just about the same time. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah the t- same time span. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty awesome, and it's funny because like the Bible says, it's like, all right, he couldn't do that, so he just went on ahead to Greece, but like you think it's like the next day he's just landing in, no. in the Apple. He's got to go, go on that boat. And it was not a long trip. Yeah. Uh, not, it didn't take, definitely didn't take three months to get there, but it, it was a boat ride mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that brought him Samothrace that island, and then into Neapolis, mm-hmm. which is Kavala, mm-hmm. and from Kavala to Philippi, where Lydia's baptism takes place, the Philippian jailer got, gets saved, his whole family gets saved, that uh, demon-possessed girl with the mm-hmm. spirit of Python, maybe we'll talk about that briefly. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, she also is set free. The church is born, but then persecution comes, as you know, thrown in the, in the jail, and and the Philippian jailer gets saved through that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But then the authorities try to make him leave, but Paul says, no, we're not just going to leave. Uh, you have to come and set us free. Mm-hmm. Now, why do you think Paul did that? Do you have the answer to that, Ryan? Um, I mean, think about that. I mean, it, it, it was kind of like if we... If we were to just leave because they said leave, they could next moment say, hey, they're escaping. Right. Mm, that's true. And they would have had them killed. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, he in, in a way, Paul protected the Philippian jailer. He he made sure that they were still in place. He maintained their reputation like they weren't escaped convicts. Right. Just because the jail busted open, they fled. They're like, no, I mean, we're here. You, we, We've been in prison. We're not going anywhere. You have to come and and help us get out. Mm-hmm. Some of like Paul's scholarship coming out, like he knows how to think. Yeah, yeah he, he knows, knows how, to how, to, how to think ahead mm-hmm. and not just say, okay, well, fine. If he tells us to leave, we'll leave. But tomorrow they could send out a posse of... Uh, soldiers right. or assassins or whoever to say go kill them because they're jail, you know they 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 are they're escaping jail. Right. Paul didn't do that, but he went on from there to Thessalonica, mm-hmm. and then from there to Berea. He they were they were chased by uh, those who were not accepting the faith mm-hmm. of the Messiah. So that's one thing that I wanted to bring up because when we talked about it the day before y'all left, we were doing that uh, devoted that show on your sermon devoted, and and how much trouble Paul was going through. And then we cut the mics off and we just started talking here and there. And I said I never realized that Paul went to th- <laughs> Paul went to Thessalonica. 
they were like, hey, you got to get out of here. Yeah. And he's like, all right, fine, I'm going to bounce. He goes to Varia, and the, the people from Thessalonica are like, go to Varia and cause trouble for him. Yeah, they yeah. went after him. They, they chased went, him down. They, they went, they followed him yeah. into another town and were like, no, you can't do it here either. The thing that got me was, and we talked about this when we were in Thessaloniki, was, you know, these, these well, this was religious leaders who had a problem with Paul, but they got rabble rousers. I mean, they got like just kind of just thugs. I yeah. mean, and then they threw the city into chaos. Yeah. I'm like, how much do you have to be against somebody that you sabotage your own city? Yeah. You just throw the whole thing into chaos because they were against Paul. And then you see like a completely different heart in Varia, right? Because yeah. that's yeah. where he goes. The Varians were, and I'm preaching on this, uh, I, I preached on this because it was, uh, uh, they were fair minded. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They took the time to listen to Paul and then go home, open up their scriptures and see if Paul was right, to mm-hmm. confer Paul's preaching with the documents, mm-hmm. with the scripture. And Paul calls them more fair-minded. Yeah. Or, or Luke, I guess, calls them fair-minded. And so that's what my message is mm-hmm. uh, to our churches is, you know, be fair-minded, go mm-hmm. home and see for yourself, is this what the scripture is saying? Mm-hmm. What you heard preach, is, is this really in the scriptures? And so again, the Thessalonike troublemakers from Philippi, uh, they came there as well, mm-hmm. caused trouble, and Paul had to finally leave. And this time he went uh, all the way down to Athens. What was Athens like? Because I know that's got to be like the pinnacle of the trip in a lot of ways. Well, before we went to Athens, we stopped at a couple of places on the way mm-hmm. on our trip. Paul oh, didn't. I got you. I got you. Okay. Yeah. Paul didn't. We we went on land. Uh-huh. Paul went uh, on the water. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. He got on a ship and came to Athens. We actually just drove straight down from Thessaloniki mm-hmm. and headed, to, or actually Berea, and headed down towards Delphi. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, the problem was we were going to stop at, uh, uh, at this monastery mm-hmm. called Meteora. Mm-hmm. Uh, these are just amazing, um, uh, what do you call it, geological formations, mm-hmm. <laughs> these massive cliffs coming out of the ground. It's unreal. And um, m- monasteries have been built upon this at one time as many as 26. Mm-hmm. And now it's what, like eight or so left, yeah. I think it is. Uh, what do you think, David, about those monasteries? I was I was blown away. Like every time we looked at the monasteries, especially from like the hotel, because in my, in my room, I opened up the window and I see... St. John's, was it? No, it no, was no, St. Stephen's? It was St. Stephen's, I believe. And it's just this huge, huge, like, rock formation with the monastery on top. Mm-hmm. So how then the it, world, like, how do they get, how do you get up there to them? Are there roads that lead to the monastery? That's it. That's mm-hmm. it. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. there are. Uh, now, the one that you're looking at right there in the middle, which mm-hmm. is... Um, right, this one here? Uh, yeah. yeah. That one right there is, uh, is uh, click on it again. Uh, I'm, I'm just kind of getting my pictures right. Yeah, th- this one is, what is it one called right there? Um, that's one. that's the one that they had, uh, there was not a way to get to it, and they had to have like a cable car that... Yeah, the oh, cable car. Yeah, yeah, that's the... The Holy Monastery. The Holy Trinity. Yeah. Holy Trinity. yeah. The Monastery of Holy Trinity. Mm-hmm. Now, that's the one they actually, I actually filmed a uh-huh. cable car going across. Wow. wow. So, now you cannot climb up and down. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're like one of those, uh, you know, thrill seekers, you could do it, but... No, you can't do that. Wow. Yeah. That's I think incredible. it was St. Stephen's was really funny because they had a net where they would like bring people up in the yeah, net. That yeah. was really funny. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so anyways, we left the monastery area. We really enjoyed that. Stayed there a whole day, went to some Byzantine chapels and stuff like that. Le- learned a lot of history. Mm-hmm. And then we made our way down. The only bad part was the heavy rains that hit Greece. Yeah. I mean... I mean, this is this was this was not normal. Really, bridges got washed out, mm-hmm. roads were washed away. While y'all were there, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, that was awful. <laughs> we flooding. didn't know that. I, I didn't know that for the first two days because I'm so just enjoying northern Greece. Right. Mm-hmm. But I could hear people talking about this, and once in a while I would look at the news, and I'm like, huh, is that Greece? Because it's not like that bad here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But in the middle and southern part of Greece. It was torrential rain, mm-hmm. and roads <laughs> wow. and bridges are washed away. Yeah, and I asked our guide. I said, "Is this normal?" She said, "No, this is not normal at all." <laughs> yeah. I said, "I'm here." She I said, "I know, but everything is okay right now." Yeah, like, huh? Are we gonna make it down there? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and she's like, "I hope so." <laughs> yeah, she kept saying, "She's like, we will, we will pray, and we will." 
trust God. Wow. And uh, we were in. She um, was a Christian, right? Yeah. Yeah, nice. she's a Christian. Yeah. Uh, we were in. Oh, Kalambaka. And yeah. we had some taxis that we took to another another uh, monastery, or not a monastery, a basilica. And um, our our taxi driver told us it was like two years worth of rain that fell in two days. Yeah, holy It was just moly. an unreal amount of rain. And we didn't notice it because it Floods was... Floods in the streets. I unreal. mean, houses underwater. Yeah. Holy... It was, it was yeah. awful. Wow. It was terrible. Now, not where we were. Yeah, yeah. But for the south... Yeah, we would pass by places that looked like rivers and, and lakes that were not supposed to be there. <laughs> oh, no. yeah, I there mean, were, you saw lakes. people's farmlands that just got washed Gosh. away. Whole bridges got knocked out. It was it was crazy. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Yeah, and our was, driver was amazing. He oh was, man, he was an ex uh, military guy who was a military police guy. So he he was just great. Mm-hmm. I mean, he knew how to drive, mm-hmm. and so he is looking for ways to get around and get us down to Delphi yep. from Meteora. And I mean, he was driving down roads. I was like, oh, Lord, help us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were taking back roads and roads that were kind of like gravel roads in this in our big tour bus. Right. And, and uh, some he, roads were like the sides have fallen out. Yeah. Uh, and he's like navigating through. The, some roads, they have cables on the ground. Yep. Really? Oh, yeah. Am <laughs> yeah. I right? Absolutely. Drove over, drove over cables that had been knocked down. And he's the whole time, the whole time we were going through that day, he was calling people, calling his contacts and be like, what about this road? Yeah. We tried this road. Because if we didn't do that, if we didn't go the way that we were going, uh, it was going to be a seven hour bus ride. Towards really? the west to make a loop and come down mm-hmm. below wow. and go back up. Yeah. And that would have been horrible because oh, we would have yeah. lost a lot of time and everything and it would not have been good. So we actually ended up doing this. But in the process, we got to go to a place called... Thermopylae. Yeah. Thermopylae. So, y'all, so you did go to Thermop- Thermopylae. We did. Nice. I remember that was a big thing before you left. You were really looking forward to going yeah. to Thermopylae. And he took us there, yes. stood by Leonidas' statue, stood by the pass where 300 Spartans gave their lives under King Leonidas. That's incredible. And held off the Persian army. Wow. Yeah. Was there anything there, or was it kind of like... Uh, it's just it's just nothing but a, you know, just a path there now. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's, well, actually, we're still on the side of the road <laughs> in the <laughs> yeah. parking lot of this monument to King Leonidas wow. and his 300, yeah. and that's about it. It was amazing. They do, yeah. uh, our tour guide said they do have a, a small museum. It's not, it's not elaborate, right? but she said there's a small museum around the corner, and they have a... There's kind of across the street from where we were, across the highway, it's not really a street, across the highway from where we were, they have like a uh, stadium that's kind of built with, mm-hmm. with seating that goes up yeah, and they have reenactments. small mini nice. th- outdoor theater. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. pretty awesome. Yeah. So that was on the way to Delphi? Mm-hmm. Uh, and we got to Delphi, saw Delphi, which was amazing. Mm-hmm. I mean, Delphi, I don't know, words cannot express it, but this is ancient site, Temple of Apollo, yeah. mm-hmm. um, Temple of uh, Athena. I mean, just, just so much is there. And uh, maybe another yeah. another um, episode we can talk about that because yeah, the, that. the young girl who was afflicted by the spirit of Python, mm-hmm. spirit of Python is coming out of Delphi because Delphi had that 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 you know the uh, where the Python was yeah. uh, that Apollo defeated right yeah. yeah yeah and 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 built the sanctuary so wow. to speak, right, mythologically. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So one thing that Eugenia kept saying, our guide kept saying, which I agree with her, is a lot of mythology is actually history. Mm. These were real people who did some real things, and maybe the fallen angels, daughters of men kind of thing was happening there, mm-hmm. you know, before create uh, flood. Mm-hmm. And these stories have been passed down and sort of intermingled with mm-hmm. the real people, and right. now here we go, we have a religion, we yeah. have myths and mythologies and gods and goddesses. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The thing that struck me, and, and I didn't get a chance to talk to you about this on the trip, Dr. Shah, was, was ev- everywhere that we looked, one of the symbols of like power and might for Greek armies or Greek soldiers was a snake. Mm. Um, yes. they, there was some on the shields that were over there in Thessaloniki by Alexander the Alexander the Great's monument. Um, of course, the spirit of Python. A Python is yep. a snake. Um, and he's talked about as being like sort of either a, a snake himself, like half snake, half man. Um, the, you have a Medusa who has snakes for hair. Mm-hmm. Um, when we were in one of the museums, there there was a depiction of Athena, and on her shield was was a snake as yeah. well. Um, I remember us talking about this when you came back from Greece. Was but was snakes were prolific in that culture? Yeah, yeah. And I I noticed that a lot. I found myself seeing it over and over and over again when we were in Greece as well. Well, come to Egypt and you'll see that a whole lot more. Yeah. yeah. 
because it's everywhere, yeah. starting from Pharaoh's mitre all the way down to the tombs. Mm -hmm. You see snakes. Yeah. You go to King Tut's tomb, it is guarded by cobras. Yeah. So <laughs> it, it goes, again, I'm going by what our tour guide said, and she, by the way, is a professor. Right. Mm -hmm. Our sister is a professor in um, the University of Thessaloniki, Emeritus now, mm -hmm. Emerita. Um, but, you know, we're talking about mythology being history, history being mythology. Mm -hmm. And what the Bible talks about in the book of Genesis, how the serpent came mm -hmm. and he deceived Eve in the process Adam sinned mm -hmm. and the whole human race sinned with him. Mm -hmm. And then the curse came upon the serpent, the woman, and the man. And Adam's curse carries down to us That's until true. the seed of the woman shall crush the head of the serpent. Yeah. So it's all of that mm -hmm. is real. And mythology and all these ancient traditions, whether it's in Egypt or uh, in Greece, is simply is corroborative mm -hmm. evidence mm -hmm. right. that the biblical account is the true account. Right of history is the truth of what really happened. All these things are aberrations. Nonetheless, they're supporting the main body of truth. It's yeah. one of those things I think where people will see, like especially Christians who believe that, that we are correct and we are historical, but the Greeks or the Romans or the Egyptians, they just made all theirs up. But it's not, they're, they're drawing from, I guess, uh, uh, like history, like historical yeah. things that actually happened mm -hmm. right. that the Bible speaks about. Yeah, but they have... They, they did not have the complete evidence, right, right. but they did have glimpses of truth, mm -hmm. and to fill the rest of the gaps, they brought in mythologies. Mm -hmm. Do you think and some of it is this distorted mythology, right. distorted truth that became mythology, but nonetheless, if you kind of sift away and, and peel away what is mythology from what may be the truth, what you end up finding is that it's the biblical truth. Right. Do you, do you think that Paul kind of understood that when he was in Athens? Mm -hmm. Because he, he spoke to the Athens, I don't think I want to say he spoke gently, but he, he spoke like, hey, I can perceive that you are... A religious people. Right. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, that comes out very clearly in Acts 17 mm -hmm. as he goes to the Agora. And we came to Athens, by yeah. the way, mm -hmm. uh, after we finished with Delphi, we made our way to Athens. And that was a phenomenal trip. I've been there before several times to Athens. And this was my fourth, I guess, or third, third time, uh, twice in one trip, and then this one third. But Athens is an amazing city. In mm -hmm. fact, every conqueror that came through Athens, they did not completely destroy Athens because they felt like uh, this is enough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't don't destroy the city. It's got too many good things, mm -hmm. too many monuments to humankind. Let's leave them alone. Yeah. But in Athens, we didn't get a chance to go through the Agora, the marketplace. Mm -hmm. But that's where Paul began to walk around and speak. Mm -hmm. And and he saw so much. He saw gods and goddesses, and and there was probably on the. Acropolis, he must have seen all these statues. Mm -hmm. They're also in the Agora, by the way. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if it was in the Agora or the uh, Acropolis, but either way, he saw all these statues and his heart was kind of burned within mm -hmm. himself. Yeah. And he gets up and makes that powerful, powerful sermon. Mm -hmm. And, and y'all stood on Mars Hill where he actually gave that sermon. What was that we like? We did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, we went to the uh, Acropolis and walked up to the Parthenon, uh, which means virgin. Mm -hmm. And then we went to the Erechtheon. At one time I had said uh, the Erechtheon was a Parthenon, but now it's the opposite. But Erechtheon is where the maidens are standing. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we walked around uh, several other temples there and looked around here and there. And then we made our way to Mars Hill. Mm -hmm. And you climb up Mars Hill and it, it's... I don't know what I was expecting, but it, it's different than what I was expecting because it, it is just this giant stone. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is, it's just a, a big boulder that you walk on top of. And it was, when we were there, it was so windy. The day that we were there, it, it, there were high winds and the top of that stone, I guess from being exposed to the wind, is so slick. <laughs> it is so slippery. Now, it's interesting you bring that up because I filmed with Pastor Shaw on rocky areas before and he, he sort of turns into like, 
a ninja parkour guy where <laughs> what where he's like jumping around and, and he's it's like completely nimble. Was yeah. there any of that going on this time? Oh, absolutely. Really? Yeah. Some of yeah. the some of the places that you were able to navigate to, Doctor Shaw, for to film. I was trying to get there and I was just oh yeah. Like I remember when we would like, film that we would film on like Israeli like um, Israelite mountains or or I should say mountains in Israel and like in Grandfather Mountain here in North Carolina. And he's like, all right, let's go this way. And he's like jumping from stone to stone like Assassin's Creed. And I'm like, <laughs> how do I do that? I knew I've, I had a, I didn't know. It was going to be slick, but I did have a feeling there was going to be some navigation yeah. going on. That was so awesome. windy. I mean, it was, it was so windy. It was very At one windy. point, I was, I'm was i standing close to the edge, like three feet from the edge. So I'm like, yeah, I have room. But then again, the wind was strong. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> any moment I'll get carried away. And it's a sheer drop. Mm -hmm. But anyways, we stood there and we talked about that, about how Paul came here. And I know Ryan mm -hmm. talked to the students on the camera. I did talking about, you know, Paul said these words from this place because he was struck by the lostness around him. And, you know, that, that same, the way that Paul was moved by seeing the world around him and seeing the brokenness and the lostness around him, that sh we should be moved in the same way to, to step up and to, you know, in love, proclaim boldly the truth of Christ, because that's what Paul did. That, those are the steps that we need to follow. And then from there, going down to Corinth, what was that like? Corinth was, um, it was, it was breathtaking to see those just the 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 rubble. I mean, we got to walk through what would have been the agora. We or we walked through, um, you know, where the shops would have been. We saw the bima in yep, Corinth. Yep, yep. What was able to walk up there was the second time going up that bima, and bima is you know this this place, this pedestal, and the Corinth bima is just huge. Mm -hmm. But it's a pedestal on which, just like in Hyde Park, mm -hmm. they would stand up there, is a speaker's corner. Mm -hmm. They get their five minutes to go ahead and say what they want to say. Mm -hmm. And then people can contradict that or they can call them down just like they did with Paul mm -hmm. on Mars Hill. Uh, this was the Bema. Mm -hmm. Wow. And uh, I, I went up there and I read from Acts uh, again, and uh, it, it was it was pretty amazing. That's mm -hmm. pretty awesome. Yeah, and even prior to going to Corinth, we stopped at the Isthmus. You, you want to say something about that, David? Mm -hmm. Oh man, that was I forgot about that. That was crazy to see this huge split where ships would like sail through, and the water was a blue that I had never like imagined water could be. Yeah, uh, and that was I mean that was just an awesome sight, especially knowing that this is something that was like man-made. This isn't right. like a natural divide. It was to avoid going around the Peloponnese mm -hmm. because it's so dangerous and risky for the ships to go through there. The windy, uh, it was so windy there. Mm -hmm. And then the jagged rocks, you never know what can happen. And uh, so, so they try to cut this road, which at one time they would drag the ships across the isthmus uh, and and take them from the Aegean Sea to the Ionic, I think. Like drag them over land? Drag them over land wow. for yeah. a certain fee. And and so now oh, they had to unload all the mm -hmm. cargo. Mm -hmm. Okay, all the cargo had to be unloaded. And then these people, that was their job. They would drag them across this track. So don't think they're dragging just across this. Like rocks and rocks grass and, and grass stuff. And stuff. <laughs> no, 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 that would not be possible. But they had these tracks and they would drag them on the tracks and take them to the other side. And so they still, with all this manpower and headache of unloading and reloading, it was better than going across or going around the Peloponnese mm -hmm. because that way you at least know you're going to get across and yeah. get, make some money. Here you may definitely... Uh, hit one of those jagged rocks and lose everything. But then they life. they constructed this canal that goes yes. straight through. Yes. Let me ask you this. What do you think, how big do you think that fee was? Like when you go, come to that canal, it's like, all right, you got a straight shot through, but you got you to pay like a like You mean, a fee you mean go through. across the land? No, to go across, uh, in, go through the canal. Or was it free for anyone to use? No, I think I think there was some tax and yeah. toll <laughs> that was there. Mm -hmm. I can uh, imagine. Yeah, I brought a book on it. Once oh, really? I read that book, I'll, I'll be able to answer that <laughs> Cause question. Because I was going to say, that's like the perfect thing. It's like, hey, we've got the perfect solution. You're going to go straight through these mountains, but you're going to pay. You're going to have to pay uh, for it. Yeah. Just know that through the centuries, uh, whether it was Alexander the Great or Xerxes, mm -hmm. prior to Alexander the Great, Xerxes... King of Persia tried to build that canal. Alexander the Great. Nero tried to build a canal. Really? All these people failed because it was like, I mean, it's it's not 
<laughs> it's a massive task. Yeah. Am I right? It, it is. It's huge. I mean, it's breathtaking to sit there and look at it. And you're like, how in the world how did, they did pull this, this happen? Off? Yeah. <laughs> it's, I mean, it, it literally looks like a giant axe just cleaved the land. It's, it's one it's, of those wonders of antiquity, I guess. Yeah, it's incredible. That's incredible. Just just seeing, I mean, I, we, we could go on and on. I could I could talk about this for, for days and weeks. And Yeah, I, I got a question <laughs> for uh, Nicholas. What, what was your favorite part in uh, Greece, Nick? Uh, probably the, probably Athens. Was, you like Athens? Yeah, it was my favorite there. Okay. What did you What did you see in Athens that you liked? Uh, we saw, I believe, the Acropolis. Mm. Uh, at night, that was really amazing. Oh, I bet. Yeah, you had a clear shot of it, didn't you? Sitting in that hotel in the restaurant, right? Yeah, a clear shot on top of the roof. You could yeah. see it from the roof. Yeah, or from yeah. the hotel. I mean, yeah. no, no. This is this was the place where we ate our final. Oh, nice night. Mm. No, it was the second. Last night. No, it was, it was the last one. That was, was the last, last night. night. That's Very right. That was the last night. Because uh, second last would have been in from Corinth. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's right. Very cool. last night. We looked out and everything's lit up at night. I mean, they have lights that shine up on the on the Parthenon, on the Acropolis. That's As you're awesome. looking out, it's just it's a breathtaking sight. Well, we're definitely going to be talking more and more about this because I think this trip has, even, even though I didn't go, this trip has been beneficial for me because... In, in following you guys, I've learned more about Paul's missionary journey and that Macedonian call than I, than I ever cared to know before. But, yeah. but seeing you guys go through it and seeing you take those pictures and film that footage and show it back. And, and like even for me to see you like on the steps and be like, Paul stood there, Paul, yeah. Paul preached right there, or here's the beam of Paul spoke there, that bolstered my faith. Yeah. And so I, I can't imagine what it's going to do for people who not only listen to this show, but stay tuned for that footage as it comes out later. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's and I'm be great. and I'm grateful, Doctor Shad, that you you're not just somebody who goes and educates yourself and comes back and benefits us. You bring people along to educate them. I mean, you did that with with Elizabeth and me on this trip. You brought us along and and helped us learn and grow, and and we're so thankful. Absolutely, very welcome. That's our goal. Mm. That's right. I'm in. If you guys enjoyed today's episode, if you have questions or suggestions for new topics, send us a text to 252-582-5028. Or you can visit us online at clearviewtodayshow.com. And don't forget, you can partner with us financially on that same website. Scroll to the bottom of the page, click that donate button, and join our Clearview Today Show family. We love you guys. We'll see you tomorrow on Clearview Today. Mm-hmm.